All right, so welcome back to another episode. And today I actually brought out the Corrado DC on a Corrado rod. Normally what I do is I fish a medium heavy for a jig. I've also been using the heavy that I've been talking about in a few videos. And today, what I actually want to do, I just spooled this. What I actually want to do is talk about like how I feel a bite. Cause I've received a couple of comments about that. So when I cast that jig out there, I usually let line out earlier than I did that time. I pull the line tight. You got that bait there. Now I, I like to let the fish tell me what they want. So I'll start by hopping it. I'll drag it. Sometimes I'll scurry it like a crawfish and stop it. And when I get a bite, it's not always this way, but usually you get like a tap and then a pull. And when you feel the weight of the fish is usually when I set the hook. Now I know there's gonna be some people that are gonna watch this and say, wait a minute, how about when you're fishing a, a 3 8 or a half ounce jig and you get a hard thump? Well, when you get that hard thump or that hard thunk, then I set the hook. If I'm using a quarter ounce, a 5 16 or a quarter ounce Texas rig or even a tube jig, I like to wait for the pull. But like I said, you have to, you kind of got to gauge that as you're fishing. So anyway, I'm going to fish this a little bit, check my drag, and I'm going to kind of try to describe it as I fish. Well, I'm going to describe it as I fish and also as I get a bite, if I get a bite. But like I said, I'm just kind of dragging it right now. And if you feel weeds or you feel something, you know, and you get discouraged, I've been there, pop your rod. All right. Or if you pop your rod or you drag, sometimes you'll just drag it and it'll come through. But if it won't, give it a hard jerk. That'll usually pop it free. And sometimes that'll even trigger a bite, especially with like a lipless or a chatterbait or even a jig when you're coming through the weeds they'll see that bait come out and they'll attack it. So what we'll do is we'll try to catch a fish here and then catch a couple others demonstrating how I do that. That's the thing though is when I go to make these videos sometimes I get talking and I start reeling too fast or working the bait too fast. And it's different when you're making a video. That's okay. And by the way, this Corrado DC, I just kind of haven't fished it since last year. I fished it all last year without cleaning it. And it does need to be cleaned. But it's actually still in good working order. I mean, it makes a little noise. But definitely amazing reel. See right there, how I popped it free. It was stuck in a pile of weeds. That's the thing too, when you're fishing that jig, it doesn't have to be a long cast. It can be a short cast. You can go parallel with the bank. You can go straight out. I even use that jig as a search bait, believe it or not. How do we want to do this? All the way back. Bring that bait forward. That's why. There we go. Look at that, it just came out. Fat little fish. Man, that is fat. It's 
funny too. I'm gonna have to put another trailer on there, but came down here, threw the jig down there, like I told you in the other video, how I popped it. I'll explain it after I get this fixed, but you let it sit, pop it, let it sit, pop it. They have to react to it. Well, they don't have to, but they're going to. So if I had to compare the net bait pack a chunk versus the Kraken Craw, and you asked me to pick one, uh, I'm not gonna pick one because I've had a lot of success with, bo with both, excuse me, but I will say that the Kraken Craw, I do like the scent on it. They're not the most durable. The net bait pack a chunk definitely has more durability. If I want uh, one that, that I'm gonna be able to catch fish on and re-thread it and last, that's gonna be the net bait pack a chunk. All right, but go ahead and take take the trailer off. Get another one put on there. Boom. There we go. This is going to be interesting. Oh, yeah. This thing about that, that Ned Rig hook set is you can just... You can just reel. There's a bite. Just like that. There we go. You know, a lot of people think a bait caster is just for heavy cover, and it's not. It's for keeping control of the fish, comfortability, uh, maneuvering, you name it. The way you handle a crankbait, the way you move a chatterbait, jig fishing, you name it. And by the way, for people that are wondering about the DC reel, I do like a DC reel. Like I said, this is the Corrado DC, but I still do prefer conventional. It's just one of those things I like better. I like being able to adjust the brakes and the SVS Infinity dial or the variable braking system. Uh, IDC4 braking, four is flip and pitch or no backlash, three is fluorocarbon, two is braid, one is maximum distance. And setting the spool tension on this helps. I don't set the spool tension on this the same way as I do a conventional reel. Conventional, I turn it on as low as I can. DC, I turn it to where it just starts moving, which is a lot tighter than I keep my conventional reels. But if you follow the owner's manual, that is what it recommends. Well, not owner's manual. It's a yellow card you get in the box with the DC reel. At least you did when I first got it. Sometimes the direction in which you cast, which what I, what I like to call a directional pattern, that will also affect whether they bite or not. And what I mean is you'll go to a shallow spot on the lake and you'll be casting and catching fish, all right? And they'll stop or they'll move farther out well, you get in waders and walk to the other side if it's shallow enough, and then they bite again. Or you throw a heavier bait and cast 40 feet farther, boom, there they are. Especially pressured fish. Pressured fish wise up to things quicker. At least that's how I feel. That's why, like, out here, like, when you're fishing and it's summer and there's tournaments going on and it gets tough, that's why sometimes you hear people saying they're going to do like crazy stuff. Like they're going to throw like a, like a, a one ounce jig or, or a three quarter drop shot. It's because they're changing the rate of the fall and they want a fish to react to it. But anyway, 